Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm Onyx Prime with my co-host here. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. And I'm Clickbait. And on today's special episode, we have another fantastic guest with us, Travis Arts. Did I say the last name right? You did. That's correct. Fantastic. Yes. The voice of Hot Rod in Transformers Cyberverse. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm, I was so excited. <laughs> to, to, You're excited? You We're excited. It's going to be you. fun. Absolutely. Well, with that, should we dive right into it? Let's do it. Let's go. So let's start with yeah. you telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, as you mentioned, I, uh, I'm i a voice actor. Uh, I mean, I'm also an actor, actor of other acting fields, <laughs> but um, I'm mostly known as a voice actor and mostly known for my work as Hot Rod on Transformer Cyberverse, uh, which was actually my first time voicing an animated character. But I also do uh, theater and on-camera stuff. I'm currently in New York, but I'm originally from Bayonne, New Jersey came to New York for acting school and then have just been been at it ever since. Wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> well, are we ready for the second question? Let's do it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I what... could just keep talking about myself. <laughs> I, I mean, by all means. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get good. It's good. Uh, what first brought you to the world of Transformers? Was it comics, a series, maybe a character, or a toy? I was seven years old when beast wars came out and i had i was lucky enough among all of the different cartoons and shows that i was watching that it it made it into the mix and i was i was a beast wars fan as a kid uh in real beast time wars. beast wars watched it like in real time when it came out episode to episode and i really loved that show uh my f okay so i actually have been having i've been first up to a certain time i i it might still be possible. I think my first, the first Transformers toy I remember having is the Optimal Optimus. Oh my goodness! Same here. Now, oh my gosh, uh, did you say same here? Same here. Yeah. Oh no way! That's wow. awesome. Look at that. It's meant to high be high five. High hot internet virtual high five. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now I sometimes have flashes of like being younger and having another Transformers figure. Like very recently, I'm like, you know. I feel like by the time Beast Wars came around, even though I was seven, I I feel like I had a point of reference for what Transformers was like it, and I I can't quite remember like what I watched before then or what toys I had before then. So I'm gonna have to do some digging in some like old like family like photos and videos. But for now, the first toy I remember Optimal Optimus, and the one that consciously uh, brought me into the into the fandom is Beast Wars. Yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Um, I grew up with Armana, so I, I have to go back and kind of watch Beast Wars. I've heard uh, good things about it, but I... It is great. I'm re-watching Beast Wars, and I actually... My second kind of conscious show that I re remember I got into, and then just because I was a little older, I was weaving in and out of things, but... I did watch a bit of Armada when it came out too. And I remember uh, it being on and being really impressed with, with the show and, and the, the style that they went for that kind of anime style. I, I was really intrigued by it. Uh, and I actually just uh, rewatched and caught up on Armada not too long ago. And I really, really enjoyed it. Have you gone back and like watched it since first watching it and like what what what's your comparison from then to now yes i'm currently watching it with onyx as we hang out on discord and, and oh. we edit some videos so we have That's... it on the side and we've been we've been enjoying it we love the comebacks between the players and or not the players the characters because they mm -hmm. they kind of they, they get angry at each other and they just kinda, and it's just they they're hilarious because they try to make it as computer and robotic as they can yes and they're 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 the best <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. also so jealous because at the TFCon, Travis, you sat next to David K. <gasps> oh my god! Who's the voice of Megatron in the Armada series? I was just gonna say what you said about them having, you know, the the dialogue and the comebacks. I think it's because you still have David K's Megatron. You have it in Beast mm -hmm. Wars and Armada, and I love. Uh, such, I was thinking about this earlier. What I love so much about Beast Wars, um, you know, the Predacons, the antagonists are so funny like it they're so comical and they're not afraid to be kind of uh kind of a comic relief but but it doesn't take away from 
how serious of a of a villain or a threat they are exactly um, and i Absolutely. and i think david k does so much he carries so much of that and so i think that's definitely still happening in his armada megatron yes. of a absolutely Click, yeah clickbait yes. i'm sorry i think you were gonna say something i don't know oh no you're good i i was just gonna say i was a little bit past that so i grew up with like animated and then later i got brought back into the fandom by prime so i've only made it through season one um i think of armada and then i'm watching transformer cybertron with another group right now but the comebacks are good uh, mm -hmm. it's just like Beast Wars wise I haven't made it all the way through that show yet the animation kills me <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny I you know from uh, I know from a from a more modern perspective I I get that you know it's funny I actually went back and watched it and I I thought you know it, I think a lot of it still actually kind of holds up and I think I think a lot of that has to do with the how strong the designs are for me like I think the the character mm -hmm. designs are really so well crafted um that i, I yeah for me in, in and maybe because i don't know nostalgia it, it so much of that still holds up for me but um yeah no i get it <laughs> i would also yeah. like to add like the story in beast wars oh. is so well now that, crafted that like, i will give it credit to like, yes like even if like there's some you know animation mishaps the story is what's the important bit and i think there's a lot of good lessons and a lot of mm -hmm. good like scenes throughout that series also, what's, you know, what is Transformers without some animation mishaps? Am I right? Exactly. You know, that's, what you know, that's that fair. That's yes. a part you of it. You gotta have your two star screams in the background. You exactly. Gotta... <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's the foundation mm -hmm. of this, of this franchise. Absolutely. Oh, I was just, since, um, since you meant, uh, Kilobyte, since you mentioned, uh, oh, no, no, sorry, Clickbait, since you mentioned animated in Prime, I just finished Prime. Really? I love that show it's so, good. so I, much. <laughs> I just did a, a first watch through, finished it for the first time a couple months ago. And similarly, I also just started my first time watch of animated, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. I, it is. I it think it's such a, a unique, um, such a unique show in the canon of Transformers. And like from the animation style to the, to the writing and storytelling, it's really interesting how it was kind of more based on that Hanna Barbera style I think of cartoon making yeah you know definitely yeah I love it I love it okay I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna be the boss here and pull us back in <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, you better right. before we started talking about Prime you better redirect yes, us because that's gonna be a whole new rabbit hole <laughs> we're gonna be here forever that's, Great that's show. how you know we're Great driving show. uh clickbait you have our third question I do have our third question so the third question is Tell us a little bit about how you got to be the role, the how you got the role for Hot Rod, a bit like the process behind it, and then what the inspiration you used for Hot Rod's personality. I mean, you came in as a fan. Did you come in with that um, insight of what Hot Rod had been previously, or did you? How did you decide what you wanted to keep from old iterations and what you wanted to bring new to the table? Mm. So I graduated from acting school, <clears throat> came out kind of just trying to hit everything as I you know, kind of still am as well but you know especially at the time you know sending feelers out for everything auditioning for everything this goes back I'm going back a little bit further into just how I got into voiceover and how it led me to the to ultimately voicing Hot Rod um uh did a workshop an on-camera commercial workshop uh where at the end you meet agents it was where, where I met my on-camera commercial agent at the time uh, and then I started working with the voiceover department of that agency. Uh, I booked for them, um, did some radio commercials for them throughout the years. You're all West Coast based, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Okay. One of my like second or third, because uh, I was thinking about this earlier, one of my second or third commercials that I did was for California's Great America theme park. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, uh huh. Anyway, thought that was, yeah. Anyway, sprint that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, subway lots of you know just radio commercial kind of stuff i think it's it was like maybe six years into working with them or so maybe six or seven um i got <laughs> this audition for transformers and um you know i i grew up with a lot of different fandoms like we we've, we've talked about transformers being one of them so you know before even acting uh, you know my passion was cartoons comic books so i definitely was always 
actively interested in trying to get into a property like that, into a fandom like that, because that was my kind of my first love. Um, just fandoms, nerdy stuff in general. So I was really excited for it. Got the audition. They had me prepare three characters. And actually, I was making a TikTok recounting this, and I actually had to go back and look to remember, because I obviously knew I was called in for Hot Rod, but I did not remember that initially I was called in for Soundwave and Teletran mm. X as well. Um, and I just remembered I skipped a part. Sorry. I was initially <laughs> called in for <laughs> Rescue Bots Academy, like oh, okay. a, a couple, maybe, I don't know, a couple months before that. So that's how I met the cyberverse casting directors i did this rescue bots academy audition which i felt really good about um didn't end up getting anything but a couple months later got called in for cyberverse um which was like oh you know i thought oh great well i had this really good rescue bots audition rescue bots academy audition and i'll go in and do this um i went in and i i said this at the tfcon panel but if i did not get hot rod to this day, I would have told you that that was one of the worst voiceover auditions I've ever had. Apps oh like gosh. I I went in and I did the the characters they gave me, and maybe you know, which makes sense now. Maybe with the exception of Hot Rod, did not feel like I had a good handle on some of the other characters. Um, the casting director then handed me a few more roles to step out and look over and to come back in and and try. And similarly, similarly, I did not feel like I had a good grasp on those either. And I know it was just like this feeling like oh, I didn't just I just didn't really nail anything. So I walked away being pretty sad about it, um, like in, in a fairly bad mood about it. And then I couple like I think two or three weeks go by and I'm having lunch before one of my like day jobs. And uh, my agent calls me. And said, hey, um, yeah, so you booked Transformers and you're playing the role of Hot Rod. And I was fairly shocked. <laughs> and <laughs> and he's like, yes. And I, you know, I just sent you an, an email with all the info as well. And uh, yeah, and then probably, I don't know, I, I don't remember the the time from when I, it was a, a decent amount of time from when I booked the role to, I think, to when I actually recorded it, maybe a mm -hmm. couple weeks or so. But yeah, then I went in and recorded, you know, my first episode um, and th and that's it. Yeah. But I thought it was a terrible audition, which ended up getting me, getting me the role. <laughs> that must have felt like really amazing afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, the, the stress beforehand must have been oh. intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did poorly enough to where I ruined a, a relationship with his casting director like just just oh, no. didn't get, get the yeah just I was like I just did not you know have a handle on those characters um so and and I was you know upset about it because I thought I had such a great rescue bots academy audition so you know to then go around and get it was yeah it was a pleasant surprise to say the least for sure <laughs> for sure mm -hmm. sure oh and then so you asked uh kind of what get kind of preparing for the role what i brought into it mm -hmm. right yeah. so i and i think it's probably one of the reasons i booked it but i think the 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 characterization in the writing i think is somewhat close to maybe just who i present as you know and so in just preparing for wow. the audition um and, and just and just kind of doing i don't know if i want to say a natch just kind of who i am naturally or who i exhibit present as naturally that kind of just what came out as hot rod and i figured well like you know it, it booked me the role so i should probably continue doing something like that um now because i was a beast wars fan i was actually not that familiar with a lot of the g1 characters or or really a lot of characters that were introduced in between Beast Wars and Cyberverse. So I did go back and um, watch the animated movie, the 1986 animated movie, you know, just to see the, obviously the origins of this character and how it had been portrayed before by Judd Nelson, um, who I was a fan of outside of Transformers for, um, you know, 
Breakfast Club and plenty of all his other movies and such. And I watched it thinking, you know, I understand why they hired me. Like there's something about my performance style and just who I think how I'm perceived uh, that I think is kind of close to what he's doing here. So I, if anything, I let it kind of affirm the choices I made in the audition and the choices that I felt like I would be doing in the, you know, going into actually record. So I don't know if I needed to necessarily change anything to fit with what I thought, how, how I thought the character was portrayed previously. Cause I watching it kind of made me realize like, Oh, I think I, I see why they chose me. So it kind of just affirmed what I, what I was doing. So in a way, yes, it, it did inform it a little bit in affirming me. Um, yes. <laughs> gotcha. <we> go. Gotcha. <laughs> inform Fantastic. and affirm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, think I, have, yeah. I think I have my yeah. words scratched straight there. They're close enough. If not. Right. Right. Yeah. So a little bit of a sidestep, but related. So if Cyberverse got another season and like you did your research on Hot Rod and so forth, would you have liked to see Hot Rod turn into Rodimus Prime, like your version? You know, having watched the movie before starting the recording process and then seeing where the story was going with um, my character uh, falling in the taking drift into the energon waste which i think at the time i didn't necessarily know if i was coming back i have a a vague memory of reading that and thinking oh i guess i am done with this show but soon after i also then i remember getting some scripts and seeing that i was coming back um not knowing where the story was going to go i did kind of think maybe they were going to go in that direction and that I was going to become a prime. Um, I later read an interview with one of our amazing writers, Maycat, who uh, has written some episodes for Earthspark as well, who said that the team thought that they had already gone in that direction. And so they kind of wanted to, I think, put him in a leadership position, but not quite go down that route because it had already been done, which I, that makes a lot of sense, I think. Right. And I like the way the, the, the kind of, the route that he went in the leadership route he went in without becoming a prime, I thought was really interesting and opened up a lot of different interesting avenues for the character. Um, But yeah, I mean, if there was more, of course, I think it'd be really fun to do, you know, if you could find a different way of going about it. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. And I'd be, (laughs) I'd I'd be down in a second to do it. Of course. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Well, who has been your biggest source of inspiration slash role model when it comes to voice acting? Oh my gosh. Um, like I said, I, you know, I grew up watching cartoons from and TV from probably a far too young age. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, 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 it's, it's so much has been ingrained in me. Uh, so many performances. I mean, Kevin Conroy, you know, amazing late, great Kevin Conroy. Um, you know, Batman, the animated series was so formative to me. Um, I, and I'm old enough to have had to uh, have owned VHS copies <laughs> of of the series and episodes. Um, I love that show. Um, Bill Lamar, who I used to watch on Mad TV and watch his performances in animated ser- shows. And when I was young, not knowing that it was the same person <laughs> and then getting older and especially <laughs> like getting more into uh, you know, who, who the voices behind these characters and, you know, with myself getting into voiceover, you know, making these connections of like, oh, wow, that was Phil Lamar who voiced all my favorite characters. That's awesome. Uh, Tara Strong, uh, Cree mm-hmm. Summer, Tress McNeil, Nancy Cartwright, uh, you know, I was a Simpsons, fans grow- a Simpsons fan growing up. Um, yeah, just, just to name a few, just to name a few. Now it's talking specifically about Transformers. It has been interesting looking back because I and I actually kind of got, got to tell him this uh, at TFCon, but Ian James Corlett's Cheetor, I think, was a huge, uh, unknowingly a huge inspiration to me um, and kind of into what my voice type ended up being. Uh, I think Cheetor kind of serves a similar purpose in that show as like uh, as a hot rod or hot shot. Oh, absolutely. Or, yeah, I would agree 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. And yeah, I think he just kind of by watching that that show, like, and ha- having that be my point of reference for Transformers, I think that kind of innately informed informs what I do for Hot Rod. 
So yeah, we definitely put him there, put put him in that in that um, category for me of influences. And yeah, like I said, I got to I got to tell him that at TFCon, which was which is pretty cool. Amazing. It's I can terrible. I can definitely see the the inspiration with uh, with your version of, of Hot Rod. Cool. Now that awesome. now that you now that you bring back Cheetor, I'm like, yeah, I can I can clearly see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's such a great performance. Yeah, Cheetor. Yeah. So our next question is, um, what was your favorite memory working on the Cyberbuster? I know you guys recorded remotely, but whether mm-hmm. or not it's something that you actually worked on, or whether it was a moment in the show that you loved when you actually watched it. Um, what was your favorite moment working on that show? Um, I really, yeah, so we, yes, right. We did record individually, um, but I, I had a great time with the director, line producer and engineers and even being um, the the writers would phone in remotely. I mean, it was just great interacting with them. I really enjoyed his season three arc, that that whole Quintesson leadership arc that it was a lot of fun takes oh my gosh and i was thrilled that i got to do a bit of a vocal change for it especially with with one character you know playing one character throughout you know that's not necessarily not always something you get to do as as an actor um right. so get get it you know it, for them they literally had it in the script when he comes back as as this you know with with this different uh di- you know color design Mm-hmm. literally had it in the script that they wanted kind of a, a a darker you know grittier sounding voice to match this mm-hmm. and one of the first things that popped into my mind was uh kurt russell as snake plissken in escape mm. from work and escape oh from my Earth. gosh you know, <laughs> and yeah i don't know what it was but it just that just popped in my head and i went back and rewatched that movie and just kind of let that I think, I don't know what, he, what, and especially what Hot Rod was going through at that point, I think kind of like, it felt akin to, to, to that character's journey in Escape from New York, kind of something, the vibe of it. So I was like, yeah, I think that'd be cool to kind of tap into. And then, you know, it comes out the way it comes out in my voice. Yeah. I just, I loved getting to do that, that grittier kind of, you know, kind of sound. old Batman voice. <laughs> yeah, you know, it has I'm Batman. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been funny looking back and realizing like, oh yeah, that's kind of like my Batman voice. Yeah. Hot yes, Rod's exactly. alter ego. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. Speaking of Hot Rod, who is your favorite Transformers character and why is it Hot Rod? I mean, it's wow. okay if it's not, but you know, just not going to call you out or anything. Right. You know, I, here's the thing. I think if I didn't play Hot Rod, it would be Hot Rod right <laughs> seriously i i think there's so many fun things about the character and the and like his history in the franchise is it's such a an interesting position oh yeah you know but since i did play hot rod i'm gonna i'm going <laughs> I'm, I'm going to exclude him from it okay and i think i would say i've become i i became very fond of armada starscream oh think, yes. yes he's yes, in yeah i can get behind that yeah. Such a good character. Incredible character and an incredible progression to take that character in in that show. And the way they stu- like the, the character study that they go through with that character, with that particular Starscream, and also the exploration of his dynamic with Megatron in that show. Oh, yeah. is It's so in-depth and nuanced in a way that I don't think you had seen before. And you, you don't get to see very often. Um, I think there's a lot of other interesting portrayals between them, you know, and some are very comical and some are a little more serious, but that kind of had the best of everything. And Yeah, was... he even had like his redemption arc and yes. then like his sacrifice mm-hmm. to try to get them to work together. I, yes. I can go on and on. I love Armada as well. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's, it's such good stuff. Um, I love his design on that show. Like it, it's, it, yes. it calls to the original design and then makes, I don't know, makes some interesting choices with it. Um, yeah. I might yeah. be biased on it because I grew up with Armada, but I, that's right. my favorite Starscream design. I, I oh. love the, the, the jet mode and how he looks yes. in bot mode and both in jet mode mm-hmm. as well. He's and he's got a lot of like figure. toy line. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and he's got a lot and that the Starscream has a lot of cool designs from throughout different shows he does and that yes. one is he really does. but that one really does stand out it's a really good one yeah yes definitely well well talking about favorites uh what is your favorite thing about being in the transformers fan base 
Oh my gosh. I mean, I, 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 there's, I, I, there's only, there's almost too much to say. I mean, I love that the, the, the fans are so passionate and, and creative and kind. Um, and it means so much to me because I was that fan, you know, I, when I was a kid, I was on the Marvel message boards and, and stuff and, you know, going to cons as a kid. And so I know, I know where everyone is coming from. Cause I am, I am them, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, but they're just so cool. So cool, kind, creative, fun, passionate, um, and funny. Everyone's so funny. And especially now that we have these different, you know, different ways of communicating and expressing ourselves on social media, like they're just, just the ideas that all the fans have are, are, they're so, I like just so imaginative and interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of that. <laughs> awesome. If you had the chance to voice any other Transformers character in any show, um, even if they haven't had like a voice yet, mm. who would it be? And it can't be Hot Rod. Yes, that's 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 fair. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very difficult. I already got that <laughs> opportunity. So, you know, a couple people have pitched some things to me, which is really nice. During one of my TikTok lives, someone actually pitched the idea of me voicing a version of um, Orion Pax. And I, oh, I really that, yeah. like that okay. idea of like voicing a younger version of a character who is like the predecessor of another version of my character and, and base and always like, and the mentor and basically every version of, of my, my character, meaning hot rod, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that would make a really interesting dynamic for me having voice hot rod to be able to do that. So that's one, I think, and maybe this is cheating a little bit, but I think it'd be fun to voice a version of hot shot. Who yes. I shot. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, you know? Hot shots basically. I hot know. Rod. <laughs> now, funny, funny thing about Hotshot, I forgot to mention before, I mentioned Rescue Bots Academy. So the voice mm. actor for Hotshot on Rescue Bots Academy's name is Pierce Cravens. Years before either of us were involved in Transformers, I was his understudy in an off-Broadway show. Oh, wow. At this off-Broadway theater called, wow. the, it used to be called the Snapple Theater on like 51st between seventh and eighth so i was his i was his understudy for this like brand new uh musical it was a musical and then years later we both ended up voicing essentially this you know essentially the same character yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. That's amazing. yeah what was the show what was the musical it was called uh hereafter it was just like a, a new original oh, okay yeah, yeah. Musical. Okay. yeah. But yeah, we just happened to both be involved. He was—he had already had that role, and then I, they were looking for understudies for his character, and I auditioned for it. And years later, we're both Transformers. Yeah. So when are these That's two characters amazing. going to meet? And oh, when's their musical episode? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I got—I gotta pitch that to Pierce. That would be so funny. Yes. You—you you really do. That would be hilarious. Be, it should be a love ballad. That way you can do a oh pun. Oh my, my gosh! Hots, yes. Hots for you because you're both hot rod <laughs> and hot <laughs> shot. You know. <laughs> All right. I gotta. I gotta DM Pierce right after. Like, <laughs> tell him to set this up. I have thought about this though. I. I. I, it, I was like, oh, it'd be really fun if we could like. I don't know where he's based out of now, but um, it'd be fun at like a con or something if we could get together and do like, I don't know, a, a, I don't know, something. Maybe I was even like, oh, well, Hotshot and Rodimus interact in um, Energon. Like we could like do Energon scenes oh, or yeah. something or 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 okay. a, a, a totally original musical. I like that as well. Yeah. Yes. That could be the next TikTok. My vote's for the musical. <laughs> yeah. That could be, a, yeah, I think the musical is the way to go. I think the musical is the way to go. Oh, and this, uh, someone on Twitter, his name is Trevor Stasik, I believe, once tweeted at me to pitch me for playing a bot bot that, hadn't, that hasn't made an appearance yet named um, Deuteroni. And Deuteroni. he's got like, he's got, oh like the, he's got like the body of a pizza, slice of pizza. And oh then like, these like, like 80s kind of uh, like, uh, Terminator Schwarzenegger uh, glasses. Um, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, and it, so I, I think that'd be pretty cool too. I also have a, <laughs> I have a, I think 
I've only, I, I, I think it's pretty decent. I have a decent waspinator impression. Oh, let's um, hear it. We have to okay. hear it now. Yeah, okay. now, now you're not on TikTok. Was I threw the gauntlet inventory. down. And, you know, you could just edit this out if it's bad. So No, we're <laughs> keeping it. It's matter. It's staying That's in. the trailer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, waspinator not serve. Waspinator rules. <laughs> That's great. I love it. That was right. wonderful. <laughs> I, so I definitely, I wasn't sure which way it was going to go after that, again. but. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. So well, there then. you go. All right. So pushing us forward, what is something no one knows about you that you wish more people did know? So, uh, well, after all the musical talk, maybe people are getting a sense, but I do sing. I actually went to school mostly to study musical theater. Um, so in addition to doing voiceover, I have done a lot of uh, musicals. I also have a band. Our name is Baby Chemist, and it's me and my partner. And she also sings. I play guitar. And yeah, we've got some stuff up stuff up wherever you listen to music. Baby Chemist. That's and awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Noted. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, you know, um, do some on-camera stuff. I... Uh, was on an Amazon Prime a show that's at, on Amazon Prime called Becoming Jif. I'm in like the first five minutes, like the very top. So that, you know, you could watch that and see me. Yeah. So like just in addition to voiceover. Yeah. I also am doing lots of other stuff, musicals on camera stuff. And yeah. So I guess also, this is somewhat related. Do you have any other projects you are working on at the moment? Just, Aside just... from now, the Hot Rod musical. Now the Hot Rod <laughs> musical. Yes, yes, yes. Your band can play in the background. Exactly. Yes, we could be our our Ball own connected. backing. Exactly. Um, you know, just just auditioning. Honestly, that's just a lot of auditioning. Nothing, nothing set in stone yet. Just sending myself out for a lot of stuff. Trying to. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm well. I'm. I'm also very much reaching out to a lot of uh conventions uh i'm doing a convention in the bronx let me look at oh the, my calendar i'm just so i remember these dates i'm doing a convention in the bronx in august august 26 in the bronx the uh, bronx anime and comic expo and then in September, I'm not going to look for the date. It's somewhere in there. But I will be at Missouri Con in sometime okay. in September. So if you are familiar with that convention or want to be, go look up the dates for that in September. And then, yeah, hopefully making some more appearances here and that here and there. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we'll see you around at one of those. Yeah, absolutely. I hope so, too. I mean, yeah, TF Con was so much fun that was it was a, a blast. blast it was that was it, i was insane it was insane <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i mean it was my first transformers specific convention i'd been to i've been going to conventions since very young and i had been a guest at some of the like new york tri-state conventions mm-hmm. but that was my first transformers specific one and uh it was just a blast it was so much fun it was a lot of fun mm-hmm I wish there were more TF cons. Oh, <laughs> well, there's the Orlando, there's like four and the Toronto. Years, so, well, yeah, well, I'll be at the Orlando one, but I don't oh, think cool. Toronto. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'll be at. I'm ho- yeah, hoping I'll I'll be at more for sure. Hopefully. Yeah. No, it's always it's always been a blast. Though. Uh, we've been to the LA one twice now, and it's we've always had so much fun. Cool. That's great. So, uh, but now we've got into the part of the questionnaire where. You can ask us any questions. Do you have anything for us? Wow. Okay. So I see kilobyte that you are also a prime. <laughs> uh, so so onyx, so onyx, so onyx, you're a prime. Kilobyte, you're a prime. Clickbait, are you are you also a prime or 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 not yet? Oh no, I'm not strong enough for politics. <laughs> politics. Now, onyx and kilobyte, how are you both? How are you both primes? And is there ever some struggles of power there? And are are you always both constantly primes, or does it go back and forth? How how is how is that dynamic work? That is an excellent question. Well, as you see in the beginning, there was the original thirteen. Mm. I'm one of those, and a kilobyte here wow. is a, it's a minicon. So power, nothing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. No. My yeah. my prime wow. comes from 
uh, trying to to come up with a name for uh, my social accounts, and so Gilbert was already taken, and I I I was like, well, there's so many fake primes out there, might as well just join them, you know? Wow, that is that's oh. one of the easiest ways to become a prime I've ever heard. <laughs> yes, <of. laughs> make, it like, make it. I think Hot Rod should have just tried that. <laughs> he probably would have done pretty well with it. I think so too. I think so too. Yeah, for sure. Nobody will argue with a uh, with a prime. So yeah. no, exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. And now with Twitter, you can buy a blue check mark, so no one's yes. gonna question. Yes, exactly. Prime. <laughs> yeah, it'll be more verified. That's we'll right. We'll 3D print you a, a matrix of your own. We'll install LEDs in it so it looks official. Perfect. 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 <laughs> Have it play sound effects when you pull it apart. Yes. Amazing. Well, this isn't a question, but uh, just a, just a statement to make. Uh, when you f first approached me about um, asking me to be on this, I was very excited, but I had not gotten that far in the comics yet. And now I'm coming along. I'm finally into the, like, I'm finally into more than meets the eye. Oh, those um, are so good. Amazing. Incredible. Um, I'm actually, for people who follow me on my social media, I am... Uh, I have the first part of it recorded. I'm hopefully going to release the first installment this week, but I'm actually doing some of Rodimus's longer like speeches and monologues. Um, yes. I'm going to be put yes. in that. I'm yes. going to suggest Thanks. that you be Rodimus in more than it's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I would. I would love to be. So yeah, so, some people have like said, oh, you should do some of the Rodimus's lines. So I, yeah, I, I did. I recorded it. So yeah, hopefully this week I'm going to, it's literally his first speech in more than meets the eye is the first thing I recorded. If there's ever talks of doing an animation or <sighs> I mean something like that. You got to put your foot there. You would be uh, the best Rodimus here. <laughs> I would, I would love it. I'll, I'll get my foot in there. All right. Um, but I did not, I finally reached the point in the comics not too long ago where I now know the reference of your podcast name oh <laughs> yes or yes. one of many swerves uh bars establishments yes yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes <laughs> um one for sure one of my favorites in in idw swerve i love oh, that yeah. guy yes he's so great great he's amazing his yes. comedy his puns oh so good still trying to catch up on his uh earth humor with his shows <laughs> But he, you know. he makes his watch movies, Earth culture movies at the bar. Mm. It's great. Yeah. I love what's, movie night. What's all of your favorite uh, Earth movies? That's a tough one. That's a, that is a tough one. Hmm. I like Warstar. I wasn't prepared. You like War Star? War Star I like is the good. War Star, War Star movies. Is good. Yes. Oh yes. Ah oh, yes, the War Stars movie. Yes. That's, oh yeah. Um, that's the one where they say beam me up, right? <laughs> oh, we've talked it's, about this. Uh, I'm always close. getting the movies confused. You're close. You know they've got that. That franchise also has some movies as well. So, um, is it the one where they say we got to go back, back to the past? Uh, <laughs> that's that's also close. That's also you're you're. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say you're getting warmer, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Well, good answers. Good answers. <laughs> <laughs> what what are your favorite? Earth made Transformers movies. Oh, another tough one. Ooh. Specifically the movies? Yes. I like mm. the B movie. The Bumblebee movie is pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. That might be my favorite too. And uh oddly enough, my favorite design from the the Michael Bay movies is mm -hmm. the hot rod design. Uh, it's a fun just one. I like the colorings. Uh again, it doesn't speak hot rod it doesn't have the flames under the red but mm -hmm. i really like the the color palette of the orange and the and the black yeah and that's cool how they make the the face and all that i really enjoyed it compared to most of the other designs because it was hard to tell what their their shape because they're mostly like spikes in different angles mm -hmm. uh, but that's that i would have to say that's my favorite design for the bots cool yeah i i agree i i like i definitely like his design too i actually just recently got the uh studio series um hot rod figure Ooh. i'm hunting it down <laughs> i still haven't found it yep i i ordered it i think i got it off of ebay a couple maybe like two months ago or so now i see well it yeah. does take a while to get to cybertron so it's a little bit you know that's mm. true and the shipping is i mean that's got it's very shipping's expensive. insane yeah. shipping you costs. think you have to pay extra for international shipping intergalactic shipping is a oh. lot that's and tough yeah most of our shanix goes to swerves because he pays a lot for his drinks 
like like right. he charges a lot so you always got to factor yeah. in that into yeah. the budget yeah. Yeah. ever since that one spaceship collided sideways between two <laughs> comets shipping has been insane oh yeah. wow yeah that'll do yeah. it that'll do it <laughs> final question for us if there are no more questions for us we have a question from us <laughs> it is uh, where can the <laughs> listeners find you all the intergalactic listeners you can, you know, as long as you have intergalactic roaming data plan, um, you can find me at, uh, at TravArts, that's at T-R-A-V-A-R-T-Z um, on Twitter, uh, TikTok, Instagram. T -t TikTok is where I'm very, mostly active, but you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and I am at travis arts official on youtube i think that's all the places yes fantastic and we'll have all those links below in the description or whatever platform you're listening to this on i want to take a moment and say thank you so 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 much for joining us today yeah it was a blast it's been a blast <laughs> pleasure was all mine i'm i'm honored to be on here thank you so much for having me this is this is a real treat it was a blast thank you yes and again, yeah. oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, if we keep going, we'll just go into different oh, stories. Yeah, yeah. The <laughs> Talk It'll forever, be the yeah. longest. We've got to hang out again, apparently. That's what yeah. I'm hearing. Clearly. That's right. That's right. All right. Sure. And for all the listeners out there, thank you so much for tuning in till all are one. Till all are one. Till all are one. <laughs>